let's have a conversation about how things could or should work in the United States. I, you know, I find this this whole thing just to, to be a fascinating question. You know, how do you put together, how do you make things work? How, how, economically, how do you make things work? And, uh, you know, Mitt Romney uh, is being attacked for being a, a corporate raider. Tom Pawkin is on the line. He's the chair of the Texas Workforce Commission and the former head of the Republican Party of Texas. And his website, Tom Pawkin, P-A-U-K-E-N.com. And, uh, Tom, uh, first of all, welcome to the program. Good to be back, Tom. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you're suggesting in a, a recent post over at TomPawkin.com that we should have basically a value-added tax, a VAT tax. That um, uh, do I have that right? First of all, uh, effectively, that it's a, a border-adjusted consumption tax to replace our corporate income tax uh, with its uh, 35% rate because the current system rewards debt, so it's great for the Wall Street private equity moguls because they load companies up with debt. Debt right. is deductible, and uh, equity, right. capital investment, employment, and savings are punitively taxed. So reverse right. the dynamics, and you'll take the power away from the Wall Street financial engineers who dominate the American economy today. And I argue a principal reason for that is because of the way we tax business in America. Yeah, I, and I don't disagree with you on that, and uh, at least in the in the macro. And and you're right that the this is why this is this is why Mitt Romney was worth over four hundred million dollars. This is or, or is worth somewhere between two and four hundred million dollars. Is and 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 why all you know all these John Paulson is made four billion dollars last year is that is that we have a tax system that rewards debt because debt is tax deductible. Now, if I could just try it for our listeners let me just convert some of this into english okay because i think i i'm concerned that you and i may be talking um using language that 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 some of our listeners may not be familiar with um first of all the way a value added tax my understanding of how a value added tax works and correct me if i'm wrong on this is that at each stage of production in uh, you know whether it's in intra company or inter company at each stage of production when value is added to a product that increased value is taxed so for example if you bring iron ore in and make it into steel you've increased its value the value of the iron ore and so there is a tax put on the increase in the value when that steel is made into steel rolled steel there is an increase in value that's taxed when that rolled steel is made into a car door that value at that that increased value is taxed. When that car door is added to a car, that increased value is taxed. And then when the car is sold, the, all the, that value added tax now has been embedded into all the various additions of value. And the way that, company, that, that other countries, particularly the exporting countries like, like uh, France, Germany, China, uh, China Taiwan, um, South Korea, Japan, the way that they're sneaking around the fact that we've no longer, they're not, actually they're not sneaking, they're doing it right out in the open. The way that they're getting around the fact that we have, uh, as, a, as a world basically with the World Trade Organization, gotten away from tariffs. Where we used to say, you know, if you make something in in Germany, we're we're going to charge a twenty percent import tax on it. They, by reversing out that VAT tax, by saying, okay, there's an eighteen percent VAT tax built into this BMW, but if you buy it across borders, we're going to reverse that tax out. What they're doing is they're they're putting up a a a twenty or an eighteen percent. Uh, tariff in effect right. for a, anything a, made in the United States. You're, you're or, absolutely right. It's a border adjusted consumption tax, but it's a it's a stealth tariff. Germany, as an example, has a 19 percent tax advantage over us. So when we hit the border with a U.S. product, they tax us at 19 percent. What we need to do, in my estimation, is as exports come into the U.S., an 8 percent border adjusted consumption tax or a VAT, all goods and services coming into the U.S. would be taxed at 8 percent. And it's important to note you get a, a, a tax abatement or tax credit on your business consumption tax here at home as you export overseas. I do yeah. think it's important to In other words, note, we play um, their game. Yeah, I, I do think it's important to know people get a little confused and they think, oh my gosh, you're going to tax this thing way on up. But it's, it, 
it, it, it, 8% is the maximum that can be taxed, and it's rebated as the tax is paid. So it's right. a total of 8%. It's not 8%, 8%, 8%. And that's the risk of, of going to a national sales tax because you can sure. be taxed a double in a Sure, but most not. of the countries that have VAT taxes, uh, right. most of the European countries uh, and most of the Southeast Asian com- countries that have VAT taxes, both as a way of generating, you know, basically corporate income tax revenue from their domestic sales and domestic corporations, and as a way of creating a, uh, a reverse tariff to right. encourage exports. Most That's of those correct. countries cap their VAT taxes between 16 and 20 percent. Right. Why, and, and if we're going to compete with them on a level playing field, why do it 8 percent? Why not do 18 percent? Well, I think that what, uh, I don't think you can get the entire, I, I think it has to be revenue neutral at an 8 percent figure. Um, Fritz Hollings uses the figure of 6 percent, but uh, let's just say it's six to eight percent. It would be revenue neutral, and you could totally eliminate the corporate income tax. I think you've got to do it rather than lower one and put another one in. I don't think you can get the bipartisan support. So I would, I would. Start okay, so with you're you're trying to do this in a way that, that that would get Republicans on board. Uh, right. know, first, first of all, let me just just establish that the, you know who you are and what we're talking about. We're talking with Tom Pock, and he's the uh, chair, chairman of the Texas Workforce Commission, former head of the Republican Party of Texas. I'm I'm concerned that you know at at a certain level I want to say to hell with the Republicans you know France for example has an 18% VAT tax plus a 19.6% corporate income tax Germany has a 20% VAT tax and a 19% corporate income tax the EU average of corporate income tax um, among the the all the European Union nations is 20.77% corporate income tax. Well, that when Dwight Eisenhower was president of the United States, we not only had a an average 31% import tariff on goods coming in the United States, we had we had 35% of the total revenue of the federal government was corporate income tax. Right now it's 11%. Well, well, so why right, would you blow because, that away? Yeah, but no you're not. You're you're getting all the goods and services coming into the US under the business consumption tax. Foreigners would be uh, paying uh, paying for it, you'd raise it'd be revenue neutral, and you'd raise just as much money as you're as you're currently raising under the existing system. No, I, I understand argue, that, and what I'm I saying would, is, uh, under the existing system, we're screwed. Right well, now, you've got corporations paying one third as much of the tax load in the United States as they well, did throughout but, most of the history of the United would, States. But, but, Tom, you, you you have a General Electric which is paying zero right now yep. because of all the loopholes and the and the special interest provisions, and they're going to have to pay 8%. Everybody's going to have to pay 8%, and, and you raise just as much revenue as you're currently getting, and it's going to grow because as jobs come home to America... And, and as you start growing the private sector again, you'll have more revenues uh, yeah. to address. Uh, okay, well the let's deficit. let's let's set aside the argument between right. you and I over whether or not we should do away with the corporate income tax because that you know we're not going to resolve right. that. And I, and I agree with you that if you want the Republicans on board, that's what you'd have to do. Uh, I just don't think that that's what we should do. But but Tom, in the minute we have left, how do we get America talking about a VAT tax here? Most Americans well, don't even know what a VAT tax is. Uh, Bruce Bartlett's got a new book out uh, on this issue, and I'm reviewing it for the American conservative. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, the uh, Fritz Hollings has an organization out pushing this. I just saw a blurb on that today. You've got Pat Choke, who ran for vice president, uh, uh, pushing the idea. More and more, I think the word is getting out. But none people, of those are the Mitt Romneys and and No, I know. This is a sad and... thing. I, we don't have anybody on our side other than Rick Santorum, and he doesn't understand the concept, so he's talking about manufacturing. But we got to bring manufacturing jobs home to America, rebuild our manufacturing base. I agree. This is a way to do it. You and I may have a difference on how to approach it, but we both understand that you've got to quit rewarding these private equity moguls and uh, yep. and and allowing this massive uh, uh, leverage. I am, I, am totally, I am totally with you, Tom, and I, I encourage people to go to Tom Pauk and P-A-U-K-E-N.com. Check it out. Thank you, Tom, for being with okay, us. Okay, thank you, Tom.